Attacks from animals of the Big Five game are not uncommon in Africa. The Cape Buffalo with its large horns and mean temper. The lion who's unpredictable and will always face its challenger head on. The leopard which lurks in the night. However, among the Big Five, there's one that stands above them all. The elephant. If you make a mistake out here elephant hunting, uh, you're in trouble. There's something about them that just ma makes you respect them, command, they deserve respect, that no other game animal will make you give. If they come for you, let me tell you, you got all kinds of problems. I was unfortunate enough to be around when a domesticated elephant got hold of a mahout and actually stomped him into the ground and basically tried to pull him to pieces. She picked him up with her trunk and threw him around like he was a rag doll. There were four of us there trying to put, get her off him. We were hitting her over the head with our hooks, elephant hooks, and she didn't even flinch or look at us. She was completely determined and just flattening him and getting him out of the way. Despite the risks, the hunt goes on. Jeff and I had discussed that, and Jeff was going to go out with Steve and hunt Steve's bull, and I was going to take Brad out, and we were going to look for a nice bull to hunt as well. You know, we're going out as two separate teams, and whoever spots the bulls, gets a hold of the other team to come over and go in as a group. We got one or two bulls right off this way. Gonna go take a look at him. You know, Steve had a term for these little walks we did, you know, he called them death marches, but uh, you know, really it, it wasn't much. I had been on elephant hunts before, and I knew what finding a track and a trail meant, and I was hoping it wasn't going to be so, but deep in my heart, I knew what elephant hunting is all about. You find a big track and you pick up that track, you send the trackers off and there you go. We are uh, well into the safari now. It's been, you know, several days and we've seen another bull that's kind of like the bull that we, that we turned out on the first morning, but I'm beginning to think we did make a mistake. I'm thinking, wow, Steve was right. I am a little bit crazy. I shouldn't have turned that bull down, you know? And it starts to wear on you. I mean, you think about it at night, you think about it at the campfire, you go to bed, you're going, God, what did I do? Oh, Brad, looks like a good track. Um, it's reasonably fresh. I reckon we give it a go. It's not too far ahead of us. So it's a nice big old bull. Got it's a nice track, isn't it? That's going to be like a 22 inch track. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon we give him a go. Let's give it a go. Brad, there's some nice, there's some nice bulls there. How many bulls are in there? Yes, Brad, it's difficult to say. This pack so tight and this brush is quite thick, but I definitely say there's more than ten in there. God, they're just enormous. I think what we should do is go back to the truck and call Jeff, and maybe he can have a look at that second bull. Okay. Because we're definitely going to take this bull. It's a very, yeah. very nice bull. Uh, six two, six two, six eight. Yeah, reading you. Yeah, Jeff, um, we're up on the knife hand boundary side here, um, and we've got a big group of bulls under some acacia trees. What I'm thinking is um, we're definitely going to take the one bull. There's another nice looking bull in the group. Um, I'm thinking you guys might want to come up here and maybe we can get a shot at that second bull. All right, that sounds good. We're, we're not very far. We'll, uh, we'll see you there now. I can't believe the size of these things. They're just gigantic, Steve. You know. Did you see them? Did you, did you oh look yeah. At them? There's a huge group of bulls over there. You know, there's always a problem with these with a group like this of bulls. You know, the one you want always doesn't give you the right shot or right position. Um, so it's not always easy. And then when when you do shoot, all hell breaks loose. So let's just we'll just be ready. You guys stay right behind me and Rich, and, and we'll get in on them and try and get a shot. I've been going through my mind this season, and, and I've taken 15 bulls with clients. Um, of which 12 of those were frontal brain shots. Three of them were side brain shots. Of those 15, seven were one shot kills. So that tells you your percentages are about 50% when, you, when you're attempting to shoot a, a brain, either a side or a frontal. Side brain's always easier, and that's really because you're shooting through less bone, skin, muscle to get to the, to the brain. Um, but also you've got a target, something to aim at with that ear slot. Now frontal changes, the angle is, uh, as the bull picks his head up or he turns a little bit side to side, your point of impact changes. And, and really there's three things that you need to happen. Is bullet placement has to be absolutely perfect. 
Uh, you need the right caliber and the right bullet. And if those three things come together, you're gonna make that shot. I've turned around and you know gave us a pretty good stern hand and quiet it down slow it down don't step on anything don't make any noises two things on elephants their hearing and their sense of smell and if you see an elephant and his trunk goes up in the air game over doesn't matter where you are he's gone There's 13 giant bull elephant. There's over 100 tons of elephants sitting there uh, ready to explode. And it's gonna get real dicey in a minute. After that shot goes off, all you're hoping for and praying for is that four of them don't come directly at you. Are you ready? Just wait a second. I'm a bit worried about the one behind Turn the faces, okay? Okay, tie right between the eyes. How far? Between the eyes. For now? Yeah. Come, let's go. Come. Down. Yeah, look at that bull. Okay, just watch out. Right there. Thanks, man. Well done, man. Oh, man. Thanks. Way. Thanks. Way to go. Oh, unbelievable. Holy cow. <laughs> the adrenaline's unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Jail. Good shot, Brad. Good shot. Oh I couldn't be happy. This is what we've talked about for the whole time, yeah. man. That's it. Perfect right match. That's some big ivory there, amigo. Well, that was a perfect frontal brain shot. Thanks. Thanks, man. To watch Brad's face after, after that bullet gone down and to see his reaction when he looked at the ivory up close was like a kid at Christmas time, it was, it was something quite spectacular. Walking up to one of these giant bulls and putting your hand on the ivory for the first time, it, it, I don't know how to express it. It's, there's really nothing in the world like them. You got, you know, a, a back foot that's 21 by 14. And then you're looking at the ivory and you're going, wow, you, it's, it's just too good to believe what's actually laying on the ground in front of you. It's really all about seeing Steve and Brad and how much they enjoy it and, and how happy they are for each other. Although Steve LeBlanc didn't take a trophy on this trip, his Botswana memories are just as vivid. Brad had his dream. I couldn't have been happier. Brad is like a brother to me. And I knew at that moment this was the pinnacle of his hunting career. Elephant hunting is just, it's different to anything else. You, you always get an adrenaline rush, no matter how many elephants you walk up onto, no matter how big the ivory is. Every elephant you walk into at close range, you get an adrenaline rush. It's hard, I tell you, to walk away from a bull. And, and Brad did that the other day. He walked away from a trophy bull that most guys wouldn't do. And I'm sure that night and last night, there was a lot of thought about whether we did the right thing or not. But, but here's the proof right here. You know, there's certain things you, uh, you remember in life, like your first kiss, first girlfriend, and, and this is one of them right here.